Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we're talking hyperpigmentation, acne scouring, and discoloration. All of us at some point in our skincare journey will experience an uneven skin tone that can really dent our skin confidence. Unfortunately, hyperpigmentation is one of the most tricky things to treat with our skincare routine. I've been on a bit of a journey with my acne scouring and hyperpigmentation over the past three years, and I've seen some really great results. There's been ups, downs, and mistakes have definitely been made. So in this video, I wanna share with you the five things I think made the biggest difference to tackling and fading my hyperpigmentation, so I can share it, pay it forward with you guys in case you're on the same journey yourself. Sit back, relax, let's start tackling hyperpigmentation. Now before we get into this video, I would love to know what your own holy grail products are when it comes to fading dark spots and discoloration. What things have you learned along your own journey? It's always worth remembering all our skin, like us, is unique and so different products will work for different people. I really want this video to be part of a wider conversation which happens in the comments section below. So let me know your holy grails, the hints, tips and hacks that have really worked for you. Whilst you're down there, if you could do me a favour and give this video a big thumbs up and a like, honestly, it would mean the world to me because the more likes a video gets the more widely YouTube distributes it on its platform so from the bottom of my heart thank you all so so much now I've got quite a lot to get through in today's video so let's cut that waffle and delve straight on in now there are many different forms of hyperpigmentation dark spots and discoloration and all of them need subtly different ways of targeting them this can all get completely overwhelming and baffling but all five of these hints and hacks I'm going to share with you in today's video will work no matter what your form of hyperpigmentation is that means it takes some of that complexity out of your skincare routine and hopefully will help you achieve your skin goals. First up is choosing the right cleanser. I think, you know, if I look back to my skincare routine four years ago, I went for whatever was the cheapest at the drugstore. If there was a cleanser on offer, I'd pick it up and I'd use it. I didn't really care what it was doing for my skin, how it was working with my individual skin type, because I thought, you know what, it's on the skin, what, 30 seconds tops? Does it really matter? It absolutely does. I think the cleanser is the thing that kickstarts your skincare routine. So if you get it wrong, actually it can mean the rest of your products have to fight against any negative side effects that you've induced from using the wrong cleanser. One of the biggest triggers for hyperpigmentation, dark spots and discoloration is inflammation in the skin. So anything we do to minimize inflammation, maximize hydration has to be a good thing. I think cleansers can be particularly irritating, stripping and drying. So make sure you choose a really well formulated one that works well with your individual skin's needs. You don't need to reach for things that are super bougie and luxury. There's lots of really nice hydrating gentle cleansers. This is the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Cleanser, one of my personal personal favourites, drugstore to its core, and I think this would work for almost all skin types. It's one of those universal holy grails that I love. And if you've got a drier skin type, you might need something that's a little bit creamier, gonna add a little bit more hydration back to the skin. So I created my own cleanser, which is the Mad About Skin Gentle Jelly Cleanser. It goes on as a cream, transforms into this beautiful, rich jelly. Definitely won't strip or irritate the skin. It really is a great place to start your skincare routine. Then finally, if you're the opposite end of the spectrum and you're super oily and acne prone, then you can actually reach for this. This is the CN Natural Range, which I bought from Lidl, and this is their Organic Almond 3-in-1 Cleansing Foam. This has a beautiful, rich, foamy lather, but it is so gentle. It is an absolutely divine cleanser to use, and this, if you can pick it up, one pound 39, under two euros, and you get so much product. It lasts like three months. I use this in the summer months when my skin's more oily. I'll use my own cleanser in the winter months where it's a little bit more dry. Reach for a cleanser that matches what your skin needs on that individual day, and I promise you, you'll have far less irritation and inflammation in the skin. In the long term, that will mean less hyperpigmentation, and I really think this is the best way to kickstart your skincare routine. Second up, let's stop over exfoliating. I was so guilty of this like four years ago. I hated my acne, I hated my acne scarring, and I think subliminally there was a lot of aggression and anger built up around that, and I took that out of my skin. I reached for the strongest, highest concentration products possible, use them way 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 too uh, frequently and that burning sensation I almost enjoyed because I thought you know what this is just eating away at all of the acne it's really not if that's the position that you're in in that mindset with your skin don't worry about it there is zero judgment I've been there and I understand just how damaging that can be but how difficult it can be to break that cycle I think what we need to see when we look at our skin particularly if we've got acne we need to say actually our skin whether it's acne prone or not needs love it doesn't need that aggression and that super high concentration it needs a little bit of love and tears and so I actually, over time, adjusted my mindset when it came to exfoliation 
took it down a notch. Instead of reaching for the highest potency, went for something that's like mid or low strength and just used it that little bit more frequently. I actually got better results because again, going back to that cleansing point, the more inflammation and irritation you have in your skin, the more likely it is to trigger hyperpigmentation. So don't inflame and irritate the skin with an aggressive exfoliator. Go for something that's a little bit more gentle. At the moment, I'm using two exfoliators that I'm really, really loving. So a couple of times a week, I'll go in with this. This is the Revolution Skincare Sally Hughes Placid Toner. This is a great mix of five different acids that's super gentle, but I definitely find over time it'll help to increase cellular turnover, get rid of some of that hyperpigmentation that little bit quicker. It's not going to inflame and irritate the skin, and it's also quite nice and hydrating, so it doesn't leave your skin feeling stripped and dried. It's a really, really nice product to use, and I think I paid like £12 for it, so it's not super bougie or expensive either. Um, a couple of times a week again, I'll use as my moisturiser this, which is the PSA Silver Lining Moisturiser. This has some very, very gentle exfoliation in here alongside those beautiful moisturizing agents. So it's kind of like an exfoliator and a moisturizer all in one. I don't overuse it. Be very mindful of any products that contain even very mild exfoliants and use them infrequently. You're going to get far better results, minimize the risk of future rebound hyperpigmentation. This is just, I, I feel for me, has been the best thing that I've done for my skin in the last couple of years. So yeah, this a couple of times a week, using that toner once or twice a week too is all my skin needs when it comes to exfoliation. And I definitely find that that's minimized my risk of hyperpigmentation and helped to eradicate the acne scarring that I have. My tip number three is azelaic acid, azelaic acid, azelaic acid. I know, I bore you guys all the time singing the praises of the wonderful ingredient. And I've done so many videos on azelaic acid, how to use it. I'll pull them all together in a playlist, which I'll link up there if you do want to check it out. But I think azelaic acid remains, frustratingly, an unsung hero in the skincare world. It is wonderful for hyperpigmentation because it actually reduces inflammation and irritation in the skin, which means it's going to prevent future hyperpigmentation. It's also great at gently increasing cellular a turnover, meaning that's wonderful for tackling and fading the hyperpigmentation you have. And it can also disrupt how that pigment lies in the skin. So if you find that that hyperpigmentation you have pulls in certain areas, causing dark spots and discoloration, Azelaic acid will just help to even all of that out. It's just a wonderful, wonderful ingredient that I think is a must-have in a hyperpigmentation routine. Thankfully, some of my favorite azelaic acids are actually the cheapest ones on the market. This is the Revox Just Azelaic Acid 10%, beautiful concentration. This is a really good product, actually, if you're shopping from within the EU, because they ship from the EU to the EU, so you can get around some of the VAT charges and things like that, meaning it's a really, really great brand to shop with. I do love Revox. Sometimes they can be a little bit difficult to get here in the UK, for the rest of Europe, I think this is definitely a brand to look out for. And 10% is that beautiful concentration of azelaic acid to deliver you maximum benefits, minimum risk of side effects. You could also go for this, which is the Face Theory Lumazalia Serum. They do a 10% and a 15%. Actually, both are really good. I wouldn't get too hung up on these two different concentrations. You know, go for the one that's easiest to get your hands on because in the long term, they will both deliver. But yeah, Face Theory Lumazalia Serum is one of my holy grails. I think I first started my azelaic acid journey with and I've never looked back. Finally, if you've got very, very sensitive skin and you've kind of tried azelaic acid in the past, and it's tingled, it's prickled, reach for this, which is the Geek and Gorgeous A-Pad. This is the derivative, which is far more gentle on the skin. But there have been recent studies which actually show that azelaic acid derivatives can work, can penetrate the skin far better than in its original form. So you might actually be getting enhanced performance reaching for a derivative over standard form azelaic acid. That research is still in its infancy, but I don't want anyone to go away thinking derivatives mean less performance. In in this case, it might actually mean an enhanced set of benefits. So definitely check this one out. It's beautifully affordable and one of my favorite azelaic acid derivatives. Tip number four is don't neglect the calming and soothing ingredients in your skincare routine. I think a lot of us are on a bit of a streamlining journey at the moment. The cost of everything is going up, up and up. So we're taking a look at our skincare routine and thinking, what steps can I trim, save some coin, save some time? And usually the first thing we get rid of is those calming and soothing serums and toners because we think, you know, what, they're not the ones that have like that proven benefit. Well, I would say, make sure you have at least one serum in your skincare routine, which sole purpose is just to calm and soothe the skin. This goes back to my original point that the more inflammation you have in the skin, the more likely you are to have hyperpigmentation in the first place. I think my problem when I started out on my hyperpigmentary journey, I was in attack mode. I was doing everything and using everything I could to tackle the hyperpigmentation I already have. I wasn't thinking about the long game and thinking, actually, what can I do to minimize this hyperpigmentation forming in the first place? Best thing you can do is a calming and soothing serum. Centella is probably my go-to. I absolutely love it. Calms, soothes, hydrates. And these are two of my favorites. 
This is the V Green Seeker Serum, which I'd say is probably the most advanced Centella Seeker Serum you'll find on the market. So, so good, so affordable, and I covered why I love this in a recent video, which I'll link up there. This is the PSA Skin Liquid Panacea. Also a wonderful, wonderful blend of kombucha alongside that Seeker. Everything you kind of need to keep the skin's equilibrium nice and balanced, no inflammation, no irritation, just calm, soothness going forward. I would fully recommend you have a calming and soothing serum in your skincare routine. Which one you go for is entirely up to you, but don't neglect it. This is actually a key part of your skincare routine, particularly for those long-term payoffs. Now, finally, can we talk antioxidants? Now, I think antioxidants are a wonderful addition to a hyperpigmentation skincare routine. I think sunscreen is the true non-negotiable, but I've not mentioned it in this video because I don't think it just applies to hyperpigmentation skincare routines. Everyone should be using a sunscreen. And if you want to know some of my recent favorites and new discoveries, I'll leave a link to a video I did up there. But I think using an antioxidant alongside your sunscreen could be a game changer for your hyperpigmentation. Throughout the day, free radicals hit our skin and they stress it out. These are things like pollution, particulate matter, certain wavelengths of light. This oxidative stress can degrade collagen, trigger premature aging. It can also stress out our skin and that stress can then lead to an inflammatory response and hyperpigmentation. So again, to prevent future hyperpigmentation, dark spots and discoloration, having an antioxidant can be a wonderful, wonderful thing. Use it alongside your sunscreen rather than instead of, I've seen some people online very worryingly say, antioxidants can replace your sunscreen absolutely not let's dispel that myth completely now your sunscreen is like the number one ingredient you need in your skincare routine and then use your antioxidant alongside it to really complement it there are lots of different antioxidants on the market you can choose a single one which often is cheaper or you can get a beautiful formulation that has multiple different ones giving you maximum benefit some of my favorites are these this is the ordinary pycnogenol a wonderful addition to your skincare routine in an oil base so i personally would mix a few drops of this into your moisturizer then apply it you just get a better user experience super inexpensive and a little goes a long way really do enjoy this one this is the neod survival zero a fully comprehensive antioxidant serum which actually combines so many different antioxidants which are going to give different benefits to the skin this has been my holy grail for years and whilst it does come with a relatively high price point i use it time and time again because i think with antioxidants it's definitely an investment now for those long-term payoffs and consistency is key finally this is the mad about skin all day protection antioxidant cream which i created a fully comprehensive formulation of so many different antioxidants all piled into the most beautiful and rich cream. Very similar to the Neod Survival, though it comes with a lower price point, and I wanted to create something different in the market. Most antioxidants come in a serum form, which is great. However, what happens if you want something more nourishing, more hydrating, or you want a different texture for your routine, something that's a really luxurious cream? That's what you get with this product. So if you're looking for a comprehensive formulation, you can either go for the Mad About Skin one or the Neod one. I think it'll depend on the texture that you prefer and what your skin's looking for, and of course your budget. But I would say, whichever you choose make sure you have an antioxidant in your skincare routine invest now for those long-term payoffs with antioxidants you won't see those immediate results but trust me in the long term it will form a core part of preventing future hyperpigmentation and give you that even skin tone that we all crave so there you have it guys, a quick rundown of five lessons I learned on my hyperpigmentation journey. I am still on that journey now. I feel like I faded about 85 or 90% of my acne scouring and hyperpigmentation, but I still have a little bit of a way to go. But I would always say, set your expectations early. You know, skincare is a marathon, not a sprint. If you follow all these five hints, tips and hacks, you will definitely see results in the long term. But have that patience. Make sure you invest now because trust me, your skin will love you in the long term. I would love to know your thoughts, feelings, opinions on anything mentioned in today's video and wherever you are in the world guys stay safe stay well i love your skin take care bye